Hello, this is Alex Eames from Raspi.tv. Today I thought I'd show you how to make one of these from a bare PCB and some surface mount components using solder paste, a stencil, tweezers and a hot air reflow gun. So let's have a look and see what that's all about. Okay, so here's a rundown of the stuff you need. You need a PCB to put the components on. So they usually come in packets and I think this was a packet of 20. So here's a PCB. I'll have a closer look at that. You can see it's, it's got pads on for the LEDs and pads for capacitors. I've used alternate capacitors and it seems to be fine. So aside from that the PCB has holes for your headers and these are fiduciary marks. We also have components. These are the LEDs. These ones are actually SK9822s and they come on reels. That's a reel of a thousand that I bought for prototyping. We also need some teeny weeny 0603 capacitors. I think I've managed to pick up two there. Yeah, they really are teeny weeny and strain my eyes to use them. I often keep surface mount components in old contact lens cases because they're ideal. Tweezers, you definitely need tweezers. Solder paste is used with the stencil to put solder on each of the pads. In here we have solder paste. I'll show you a close up of what solder paste looks like, but it's bent basically lots and lots of teeny balls, but you'll notice this isn't a leaded solder. This is made of tin, bismuth and silver. It's a special low temperature solder paste because I found when I was using my heat gun to make some of the early boards I was actually cooking and killing some of the LEDs. So I decided to find a lower temperature solder paste in order to increase my yield. Over here we have some IPA it's isopropyl alcohol, it's a solvent. Essentially it's an industrial alcohol and it's used for cleaning the stencil and the PCB. Here we've got double-sided sticky tape and a pair of scissors. I generally line up the stencil with the PCB and stick it to the PCB at each end using double-sided sticky tape which is nice because it holds it in place for the duration but it's quite easy to take it off. In an industrial context you would have a frame that acts as a jig. And here we've got a DigiSpark, which is a small AT tiny based microcontroller board. And what I use that for is testing the final product. Connect it straight to this USB battery pack and you've got a board tester. It flashes red, green and then blue and tells us whether the board we've just produced is working properly or not. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna clean Using the IPA, we're going to clean the board and we're going to clean the stencil. Okay, so I've worked out the correct orientation of the stencil from these holes which line up with the fiducials here. So I'm going to clean that side of the PCB and the other side of the stencil. A couple of squirts of IPA. And a generous wipe of the board. Then you can set that to one side and it will evaporate and we'll give a good old rub on the stencil to get rid of any excess sticky left over from last time or any residual solder paste. Okay, that looks clean. Pop that back down. There must have been some residual solder paste because that's what the paper looks like after the wipe. Now I'm going to cut a small piece of double-sided sticky, which I'm promptly going to drop and then pick up again. I want to cut that in half. I'm going to put a piece there and another piece there. Press those down nicely and then I'll get the tweezers and use those to try and pry off the backing. usually works 
pretty well. That's one done. Yeah, that's got it. Okay. Right. Next step is to try and locate it correctly on the stencil, which can be an interesting experience. Ah, oh, here you go, the ident marks pretty much lined up, and we can press gently then make sure that the pads are lined up nicely. Which they seem to be. You see, you can see pretty much just gold pads. And once you're happy that you've got those lined up satisfactorily, You can press firmly on both ends. And that's as it should be. So next up we're going to take some solder paste and we're going to use this Amazon Prime card to act as a squeegee to spread the paste so that we get just enough to fill the holes but not so much that it seeps all over the place. It takes experience to get about the right amount, and I don't always get it right, so quite often I end up going around correcting it afterwards with a skewer. We'll see if I get it right this time. So let's open this. This gets kept in the fridge to prolong its life, otherwise it goes off pretty quickly. So the first thing to do is squeeze a bit out onto board onto the stencil. That's probably not enough. Give it a bit more. Right, and then I'm going to put that back in the box so it doesn't splurge out all over my workbench. Okay, now I'm going to spread this using the card. at this point that I stop and put some reading glasses on so that I can see a bit better. I expect everyone's going to tell me that I have got lousy technique. That's a good job. They don't have to do very much of this. It's only for prototyping. Most of the real work gets done in the factories. Right, let's have a look. The other end looks like it could do with a bit. I think we've managed to get some in all the places we need to. Let's have a closer look. It's not perfect, but it's never going to be when you're working by hand. Right, it's good enough, I think. So the next thing we'll do is we'll just pop that open, take the stencil, and check out how badly we've done. At this point it's also a good idea to give the stencil a wipe because if you forget and leave it too long it's harder to clean. So let's just give that a wipe straight away. It doesn't have to be a perfect one, we'll do it again later. Just to get the bulk of the solder paste off. Now let's Let's turn that round the right way, zoom in, have a close look and see just how badly I've done. 
So as you can see, you can see it better than I can with my naked eye. There's a little bit of clean up work to do. So let's get on with that. It will self correct a little bit in the reflow process, but there really shouldn't be any solder between those pads. You can see there I need to scrape it a little bit, but that's okay. We can do that. It would self-correct a little bit, but when you've really grossly overdone it, it's a, it's a good idea to just take out some of the excess. This particular solder paste, whilst low temperature, is a little bit runnier than the stuff I normally use. So this particular problem is a bit more likely to occur, but it's still worth it because Hopefully it avoids me overheating and killing the LEDs. It's quite annoying when you make a triangle with 24 LEDs on and then have to replace five of them because you've cooked them then you tend to find that when you're replacing them you might cook the ones next to them and oh, it was pretty frustrating until I discovered this lower temperature paste and it's given me a much better yield obviously in commercial circumstances it looks like I've missed one in commercial circumstances you'd use a really tightly temperature controlled oven not a homemade setup using a reflow gun. Okay, that will do. Right, let's start putting some components on. So the first thing I'm going to do is clean the tweezers because they've been used to take the backing off the double-sided sticky tape, so you don't really want sticky tweezers. Now let's place these capacitors. Pick one up, plop it down and let go. Good, one's done. Not as fast as a proper pick and place machine. And not as accurate. But good enough for our purposes. That's the capacitors done. Now let's open the LEDs and tip those out. I find if you just twang them they tend to turn over but then I'll need to reorient them the correct way. Now if you look closely you should see at the top corner of each one there's a little cutout which is how you know which way round the LEDs are supposed to go. Right let's place them on the board starting with the zero. This is where the silkscreen square is really useful in showing you where you need to place your part because without that it would be quite difficult. Not for the pick and place machine which has knows programmatically where all of the pads are but for those of us human beings who end up there. So you notice, well you probably won't notice, but if I zoom out you'll see that what I've got is I've got a box here with a piece of cardboard on and that gives me the flexibility to move things around but also means I can rest my hand on here and pick up a piece and plop it down and it means that I don't have to hover in mid-air and be a steady eddy, but I can actually pick up and plop down 
with quite good stability. So now that you can see the board is populated with four capacitors and eight LEDs, it's time to cook it. This is my soldering and reflow station. You've got a soldering iron, which I'm just going to plop out of the way, and the reflow gun here, which is essentially, it's a hot air gun with fine nozzles. You can change the nozzle, but I've chosen one for an appropriate size. So we're going to use a relatively low airflow and 300 degrees. So we're going to use 40% airflow and 300 degrees for this. Okay, I'm doing this on maximum enlargement. The heat gun is going to make some noise though, so sorry about that. Hopefully it won't disturb too much. Okay, let's begin. Oh, well, you can see that's just beginning to melt. Right, now I'm going to move to the other end so as not to heat up the local area too much. You can see when it flows. Okay, we'll move back to the other end now. Give the capacitor a bit of heat. Right, now back to this end. So you want a nice electrical and mechanical connection because the solder holds the LEDs in place as well as providing electrical connection. Okay, back to the other side. Make sure we give the capacitor a bit. There's just the middle bit to go by the looks of it. After soldering, I usually have a quick visual inspection using this rather cool magnifying glass that I got from the Pi Hut. It's got uh, LEDs on it, so it gives you illumination. So I wonder if, if I can actually show you anything useful. So after a quick visual inspection with the magnifying glass, it looks to me as if we have good connections on all of the joints, which is great. What we need to do next is plug in the test device Okay, once you've built your board, you've got a test device here, a DigiSpark with a USB battery pack. It takes a couple of seconds. Red, green, blue, yes, all eight are working on all three colors. Fantastic, so the board we've just made works perfectly. Hurrah! Well, I hope you found this interesting. How to assemble a surface mount board using tweezers, solder paste, and a reflow gun. This was Alex Eames from Raspire.tv. Thank you for watching. Please remember to like, share and subscribe. Also, please visit our Kickstarter if you'd like to get hold of some of these LEDs or some different shape boards like this and make a pyramid. Come and visit the Kickstarter, which closes on 2nd of April.